I want to start a series where I go through websites of small businesses um, all throughout America and Canada and give you the behind the scenes of how a website designer with many years of experience looks at a website, specifically small business service based websites. Um, the reason is, is because a lot of the things that normal visitors uh, think and, you know, judge a, a business for on what's on their website, um, it's subconscious. They're not thinking about it consciously. What I want to do is bring that to the forefront, talk about it consciously, because, you know, through my many years of experience, looking through tens of thousands of websites, probably, um, I've come to um, bring these sub subconscious uh, opinions that many people have to the forefront, to the conscious mind. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start with Law Firm New York, because that's sort of the stereotypical, like, most rich industry in the most rich area. Um, and uh, I opened all the businesses on the first page of Google Maps. So these these are 20 um, listings. One, it's actually 19 websites because one doesn't even have a website link. But just as a disclaimer, I don't want to comment on the quality of the business in any way, how healthy it is, just because it has a, a you know, maybe not a great website or a bad website. Um, there could be a, a ton of factors behind that. Usually I found um, if a business is raking in like, let's say 10 million a year and they have older um, sources of leads such as billboards or uh, TV ads, then they don't really see a reason to invest more in online marketing. And at the same time, although a really good website may cost like absolutely nothing to a big law firm that has a ton of money, um, usually most website designers, because they know how much money these law firms are making, are going to quote astronomic prices like six figures um, for a website that's, you know, could be made very well for, a, you know, a tenth of that price. So um, there are a lot of factors behind why some of these websites may not even exist in the first place or um, why they're not great. So just keep in mind a website is a tool just because this tool isn't, you know, sharpened um, doesn't mean the business is not good or high quality. But at the same time, I do recommend people do ups update their websites if they are looking to get more clients to grow their businesses um, because people do judge you based on your, your business, uh, business's website. But like I said, if you're, if you're happy with the amount of business you're getting, there's really no no reason to update your website other than perhaps user experience, like improve the experience of um, existing clients that go through your website. But um, that usually isn't uh, the first priority for many businesses. They just want to keep you know providing services, focusing on that. Okay, so first thing, Shapiro Law Firm. Um, I think I think this site looks good. It's very clean. The font. Um, is is a you know attractive font and it sort of pulls you in with a nice background image um i will say probably they have a bit too much text right here um and this i'm, I'm sure you've seen a widget like this pop up on many websites usually you see this on an e-commerce website usually it's in the bottom left as well but um yeah, I very rarely see it in an industry like a law firm. And it's because it does, you know, it gives off that e-commerce feeling like um, usually you'll see something like someone just bought this shoe, but you'll see uh, Google reviews as well. And um, I've I've used it myself on my own website as well um, from time to time. Sometimes I'm like, OK, maybe this is a great idea and I toggle it off, but um, I'm just not too sure using a widget like this is is going to help a law firm per se. Um, obviously, the reason they do it is to show social proof. But in in my opinion, oftentimes the best social proof can be um, presented much more professionally for a law firm. So um, not a big deal. I think it's great that they're including um, pictures of themselves. You always want to make it you know, get to the personal aspect as soon as possible, um, especially because clearly that's one of their most important values. Um, 
I like how clean the site is. This, it, realistically, very few people read any significant amount of text on a website. Um, I think many people are surprised at just how little people read on a website because um, usually most people, the most experience they have with a website is on their own. And of course, everyone reads every single word like 10 times on their own website. So they sort of imagine other people do the same. But um, just think about your experience with most other websites. You skim, you read the headers, the subheaders. Sometimes you'll read like a list, you'll read the buttons, just all the big things. But any wall of text like this, very unlikely you'll read it. And usually only if you're very interested in that topic, like if you're specifically looking for family law, yeah, you'll read this. But if you're searching up family law lawyer, you won't land on this site. Like there's probably some other law firm that specializes in family law. And so there's really no reason to include such a big amount of text on each specific thing, because if someone's searching criminal defense lawyer, um, they're not on this page, most likely. The reason they're on this page is probably a more generic reason. And so, of course, everyone does probably have a specific reason to look up a law firm. So maybe they do have some immigration issue, but you don't need to give them all this text at once. A homepage is more like a table of contents. So you could really minimize this text, make the design much more image based, and then let them click learn more and then feed them more more of the text that's relevant to them so yeah in my opinion having this much text just sort of um intimidates visitors to be honest um nice to see he's emphasized again i think especially in the law industry um where you're working directly with people it's very personal um you did you, you definitely do need to show off who you are um credentials big pictures of yourself. Honestly, I'd prefer maybe maybe if you didn't look angry, I think uh, perhaps he did this on purpose just to, you know, look more like he's an authority, like he's the boss, he's he's a leader, you can trust him. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe they did that on purpose, but he does look a bit too angry. Uh, this is a nice friendly picture. Maybe, maybe they did this on purpose, like bad cop, good cop. So <laughs> both all types of people will be, um, will be attracted per se. Like if, if someone that's looking, let's say for a bulldog lawyer, they got this guy, someone that's looking for someone warm and inviting, they got her. So, um, you know, maybe they did that on purpose. Recent testimonials. Um, yeah, I think it's super important to include uh, testimonials on your site, but it just seemed like this section was not really, um, it was like thrown together. Like the spacing is off. Like recent testimonials, there should be some white space here. Um, and then they have this really, really small parallax effect. It's like 30 pixels of space where you can just vaguely see the American flag. Um, not even sure why they would include that if it's that small. Um, but then the font is in, isn't even the same either. The paragraph font for the testimonials is different. This is like two pixels larger. The line height is, is larger as well. It's small details like this that, you know, people aren't thinking, oh, there should be 20 pixels of space here. This should be two pixels smaller. Line height should be 1.2% uh, <laughs> smaller. Um, but they notice incongruency. They wonder like, okay, why is, why are things not matching? Like, is it so hard to have things match? Like people are pat pattern recognizers. So they can, I'm sure if you flash an image like this for literally a quarter of a second, 250 milliseconds, people will um, be able to say, okay, there's something wrong with it. Maybe they won't know consciously, but they'll they'll just feel it like something's visually off. So yeah, I think very awesome that they have testimonials, especially if it's recent. Um, but 
I think they should spend more time just making sure the spacing is right, all the all the details, and also, frankly, I would say it probably is also too much text on the home page. I would prefer seeing um, a structure like I suggested here, more image based, have a clear button where people can read more. I think you you want to sort of have like a hook, even for testimonials. Um, you want to be constantly selling, not like your services, but selling people on getting more engaged with your site. So you want to constantly sell them on why they should spend more time on your site. Because the more time they spend on it, the more likely they are to gather the information they need from you and then convert with you. So in terms of this section, they could have some sort of, uh, not clickbait, but like some compelling hook, like, what did you do for them that was interesting? Like you write, you have a nice image, two sentences, and then a button where people can read more. Like I'm, I'm sure if you're one of the top lawyers in New York, you probably have some very interesting like hooks, like stories. Um, and then you get people reading more testimonials, which by the way, showing, showing proof of past work is one of the most expedient ways to get people to trust you because uh i mean people can only trust you so much for for talking about your own business they know there's a bias there but uh, if other people are talking about you um it's completely different even though you may have asked them to talk nicely about you people still you know our brains work uh in, in interesting ways and social proof matters a lot so um definitely don't discount the importance of testimonials. And so that's why you sort of do want to have a little hook, a little clickbait to get people reading more of your testimonials or watching testimonials. Video testimonials are also an amazing way to generate trust. Um, yeah. And a nice call to action at the end. Yeah. So I think... Uh, in some industries, it definitely does make sense to have a contact form at the bottom. I agree with um, in in the law industry. Usually, people aren't like just browsing for no reason. Um, usually, they have like some compelling pain, um, and they're. It's not like let's say personal training where it's there's really no compelling reason to start now, unless maybe you have like a wedding coming up or something. But it's not so such a big pain. But if you have some law issue, that could be the number one pain in your life, number one problem. And so you want to make it very easy for people to, um, you want to make it very easy for people to um, get in contact with you. So you don't want to sort of put them through, let's say, a funnel to to work with you. Like that's also why you you want to have a phone number right here. Like if they want, they can just instantly call you. And then what they did here, clearly uh, marriage-based green cards, um, I guess they do a lot of work with immigration, I guess. But so for whatever reason, they found that a lot of these people land on the site. And so if someone doesn't have such a compelling enough issue that they're going to, you know, give in their contact information or call right away, they now have an incentive to do so. So if they weren't captured by this form, they're like, they're, there's a second attempt here with this handbook. Of course, they're sort of missing out on everyone else that may want to, um, all the other audiences. So this is very unique, marriage-based green cards. Like most people will not fall under this. So... Um, but I'm sure the reason they did this is because they get either this is a very high profit, uh, high margin service for them. Um, and so they want to keep like they love getting these clients or they already get a lot of these people. And so they're just focusing on a strength they they have. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's a great, great reason um, to focus on that. This is called a lead magnet, by the way. OK, next one. Um, so. What was interesting about this guy is he had a pop-up come come up like within a few seconds of me landing on the site. 
uh, very um, strong wording or a very, let's say, emotional issue. And so what this does is for most people, this isn't going to apply to them, obviously. But for the people that this does apply to, it's like they were about to leave. Um, and now they're very likely to at least spend more time on the site. Maybe they won't contact him, but they will at least spend more time on the site. So um, the statistics for pop-ups are usually like 2 to 3% of people, of visitors, if they convert on the pop-up is like awesome. Like that's amazing. So let's say 2 to 3% of people are survivors of this stuff. Um, and then I would say close to 100% of people, if this is relevant to them, they see this, they'll at least spend more time on the site. And so instead of having some generic pop-up that's like um, applies to everyone, but only 2% of people will click through, this sort of interesting strategy, maybe like a few percent of people, this applies to them, but a very high percentage of them will convert from it. So um, at the same, similar to what I said here about the lead magnet, I guess this guy just wants to work more with these people. Maybe it's a high margin um, activity uh, or a service for him. Maybe it's something he really personally uh, speaks to him. So it's more to, more of like, you know, service to people. Um, or maybe, again, he just has a lot of experience with it. So he wants to focus on his strength. So what what's unique about this one is the scroll. So it's it's the uh, slideshow type of scroll. And um, yeah, usually I don't recommend it for clients, but honestly, I would say it works. Um, it's not, I wouldn't say it takes away from, from the content of his site. Um, and it definitely, it definitely is a good site. So the first thing you see, obviously, you see him. He looks like, you know, he looks like a professional. Um, I would say probably too much text here. Like when someone lands on a website and they have no clue who you are, it's almost like you meet someone at this networking event and then they they get into like 20 sentences of about themselves. It's No one does that. You have to ease into it. You know, you um, first, in a sense, you have to sell people on like why they should care. So this text, I think, is great. Maybe the design could be different, but um, having something like that, his image, that's awesome. Um, as well as a nice clean menu and then a very clear call to action. Again, same same idea as like having the contact form here um, or I think you'll find that a lot of law firms, they have the number or email even uh, just instantly at the top or very visible because again, in this industry, people usually have, if they have a problem, it's the biggest problem in their life at the time. And so they really just want to solve it. They don't necessarily want to read too much. Um, they want to stop worrying about that problem. So next what he does, um, instant trust building. So what this does is it shows people, um, look how much experience I have showing his, uh, largest numbers like 16 million, 12 million, 11 million. Um, yeah, very large, uh, numbers and half a billion. So very subtle things. There's a lot of things I could unpack here, but just one example, he says half a billion instead of 500 million because um, people are more, like people's minds will attract more to the billion. And so half a billion seems like more trust building than 500 million. Because like 500 million, it's like people are more fo more focused on the, on the million Whereas half a billion people, you know, your minds are more focused on the billion. So um, little things like that uh, just shows he's he really 
whoever made his site really took the time to make sure every detail is is perfect and um yeah it shows so another thing i like is a lot of his sections there's not too much going on so it's not there's no walls of text really um well a small one here but uh it's not a big issue i just i really doubt a lot of people will be reading this i i would have preferred to see it like maybe in the fifth slide or like sixth slide because at that point people have seen okay he's done half a billion in verdicts he's um another awesome picture of him looks like a friendly professional guy he has a team and then he's been on this all this media and then they're going to be happy to read more about him because they're like wow this is like he's a big deal so um yeah so this is one thing I recommend doing on uh, in all cases. It was done here as well. <laughs> Marriage based green card, same thing here. He likes construction workers. And so he has a section devoted entirely to them. And so you have to think in your own case, like who are the who is the ideal ideal audience that you'd love to have as clients? If you're not speaking directly to to them, why not? because not all visitors are created equal to you. Um, you want to feature your most important ideal clients because that's going to attract them and it's going to neglect other people, sure, but um, that's okay. Like You have to exclude some people in order to attract the right people. Okay, and then a call to action at the bottom. Sadly, there is some, some issue. Um, and people can't submit this sucks because everything everything on the site was was awesome really i would i would give it like a nine out of ten really and then you get here to the contact form and you can't even submit it at least people can still call you have the live chat option as well you can give live uh you know contact them i guess this is either a chat bot or there's a real rep on the other end. But um, yeah, it's after everything was done so well. Now, there's no submit button. You can't you can't submit this form. Oh, well. Okay. Next one. So this site, I'm not going to get into too much. I think you'll see the difference. There's no personality behind it. Um, like in these two, you don't know who you're working with per se. At least they have something like this, as seen on. So every single homepage, you need things on there to build trust. It could be images of your office, images of your team. It could be, you know, as seen on. It could be some um, very impressive numbers like right here. But there has to be proof that you can solve this person's problem. That's always, that's what, that's what showing all this proof is about. Because a business is really just about um, you being able to solve your audience's problem. So they have a problem, you have the service, and then they have to trust you can execute on fixing that their problem with your service and so there's like there's like a million ways to improve trust in the um in your ability to to fix that problem for them but there has to be something and there has to be a lot actually and so they don't have anything about themselves but at least they have that um this i think the reason they put it so high up, it's not for logistics per se, it's partly for logistics, like to show, um, okay, this is where you can find us. But to be honest, I think it's mostly to show off, we have four locations. Usually p businesses that have multiple locations, um, they're significantly have much 
more smooth, streamlined operations because like having four locations versus one, if that one wasn't doing well, the four year business would completely collapse. So things have to be going quite well to have multiple locations. And so people, people, I think subconsciously know that. And so that's, that's why they're showing that off. Um, they're showing off, um, past clients. I think this can be a bit misleading to be honest, because people see these logos and they think that like at first glance, some people may assume, um, this law firm worked for Google, for Facebook, but it's not, it's just, um, the review is on Facebook or on Google or on Yelp or Avo. Like if you think about it, I think that's why they included the logo and made it significantly larger than the see more. And that's why they have four different ones. Usually people will have like multiple reviews from Google. Why do they have one from each? Yeah. Um, a blog section. Usually a blog section, it, it definitely does help. It, it makes, it shows people that you're staying up to date. You care about your business. It is sort of a red flag if you have a blog and then the last time it was updated was three years ago. People are wondering like, Okay, why, what, what happened? Why'd they stop? So if you're not updating things regularly, like let's say once a month, um, I would say don't even have a blog because it sort of makes you look bad to have old ones uh, just sitting there. Um, at the same time, you could just remove the dates from the from your blog anyways. And so it looks, people don't really know where's, when it was made. Um, but this is another trust increaser. So... It's not so much that people are going to read any of these. Um, maybe people will read one or two. No one's going to read all of them. But, um, you know, if you have like 100 blog posts on on some topic and it's it seems nicely done, it's not like no one's going to read all 100, but like if the visuals are right, the titles look good and, you know, the first few sentences look good, people are like, people, people say, okay, like, these people know what they're talking about, so I can trust them. And then the contact form at the bottom. Nice. Okay, this was uh, one I was really impressed with. I think it's awesome. Nice, clear video background. The font is amazing. More than 3 billion recovered, so that has to be one of the largest in New York, I'm guessing, um, showing their more proof. They're on all these uh, media organizations that everyone knows about. Have some really professional looking pictures. There's a personality aspect. They have specific case studies. Flint water crisis. Um, I think everyone knows about this for now. So not only are they showing impressive numbers, they're name dropping. People are like, oh, they helped with the Flint water crisis. Wow. They are an experienced team I can trust. So I think this is just like sensational. Amazing professional picture showing off some of the team. Yeah, showing off different services. I think this if we go back to what I was talking about here, this is a better way to show your services on your homepage, not a wall of text, something like this, literally just a title and an image just to engage people visually. But if people um, are, you know, if one of these is relevant, people can click through and read more. Simple. And uh, it's not like anyone that has a lead poisoning issue probably aren't worried about like sexual abuse. Like they're all different things. So people don't need to read up a bit about each one. They literally just need to find the one that's relevant to them, then click on it and, and look through. Um, know the difference. Honestly, people rarely read everything 
that's here, but the design is good. So at the very least, you know, if let's say maybe 10% of people will read all this text, the other 90% are still going to be like, wow, this website looks really clean. I love the font as well. Perfect for a law firm. And uh, a recent up-to-date blog. Clearly, there seem to be some pattern with sex abuse in, in law firms. I guess it's a very high margin service for them or just some something they like doing. But yeah, they're clearly, a lot of law firms clearly are competing to, to, to be like the law firm that you go to for sexual abuse issues. And then the contact for, form at the bottom, as expected. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Um, let's see about the live chat. Curious to see. Uh, I said no. Seems that you're speaking with a real person, Mitchell. Well, so far this is a bot. Usually what happens with live chat is the first few prompts are like automated just to save them time because usually it's people playing around with the live chat um, so that you don't need a live um, live agent. But then after a few responses by you, clearly that shows some intent, higher intent by you. And so then people will... Uh, it's probably a real person that will reach out and connect with you. So, yeah, very, very good website. Um, this law firm, I think I think you can guess by now what, what I would think of it. Um, just I think it's a bit outdated. I think... Honestly, I'm not even gonna get into it in, into it too much. Um, but you just compare this site to something like this, right? There's no personal aspect to it. Um, it just sort of seems thrown together. Look, the blog was last updated 2017. What did I just say? By the way, I didn't look at these sites first. So this one, first time look, I'm looking at it. And uh, yeah, you shouldn't even have a blog at that point. Um, oh, interestingly enough, they do have like a recent blog, but it's here in the in the footer where very few people will will see that right away. But this blog posts, hmm, maybe they decided to feature these here because um, it's the most like relevant, like topics that may be relevant to many people, like trademark. Uh, trademarking business names like landlord tenant law rights to a speedy trial so in that case i'd probably change blog post to like something more generic like like an info bankers i don't know a better term i'm still thinking like what's the what's the best term but like this isn't a blog per se valuable posts even um something something in that area um but yeah like you look at this image why is this the only image like the only real image this is a stock photo i guess um it's weird these two i'm guessing are real photos right because it seems like this is the guy but why why is this one a stock photo this section looks like out of place and these two are real. Although, like, why is this image used for civil litigation? Like him in a mask with a ticker at the bottom, I guess to show he was on the news maybe, but it's not too obvious because everything's cut off. So it's it just sort of seems thrown together. It doesn't seem like a lot of things were consciously, like very consciously thought out, like in some other examples. So honestly, I would give that like a five out of 10. Maybe I should start rating each one. I feel a bit bad to do that because like I said, 
um, a website is no indication of like how healthy a business is doing. Um, it's just like, it sort of shows um, how much they invested into their website. And there could be many reasons why they, they've invested. Um, but, and usually you definitely do want to have a website like this more than website, not like, not like this, but, um, yeah, you can have a bad website and have the most amazing service and quality. It's like, I'll give an example. You could have an ugly storefront and you're selling products. You could still have the most amazing products in there, like great price, best in the world, but like your, your windows broken and dusty and like the sign outside is, is broken as well. People are going to judge you. Let's be honest. Like they're going to think the products are not high quality, but there's a chance that you're just, for whatever reason, like you get too much business anyways, you have, you're sold out of products. You can't get any more, um, you can't sell anymore. So like, why would you invest in, in, uh, upgrading your storefront? So that's, that's, uh, just want to emphasize that. If I do rate uh, these websites, I'm sure they're all amazing law firms. That's why they're basically on the first page of Google. Um, this one, just a lot of clip art. Um, yeah, it's, it's not good. It looks like it was made five, 10 years ago. Like it was like a fresh website five or 10 years ago, but uh, just, it's not, I don't know. It, it seems like individually, there's times that they're, that they're doing things right. Like they have this list of, um, I guess, past clients or they have, let's say, helpful resources. That's honestly, that's probably the best term to use instead of blog where they have like an image of the managing partner. But just overall, there isn't a good cohesiveness to it. The design does look outdated with the clip art in the font and um, it just doesn't really seem to inspire much trust. This one, they had a lot of opportunity here. It looks like this is a real photo, right? Cause this guy, this guy, this guy, like it's the same guy, but people can't really tell. So there oftentimes if an image is really hidden like this, people will be like, oh, okay, that's a stock photo, especially with all this clip art, which yeah, clip art is not the way to go these days. Definitely not. Um, unless you're some tech company, maybe there's like a startup. I could see that, but definitely not for a law firm. And uh, yeah, this is a great photo, but they're hiding it. They're hiding this one too. So I think there's, I guess what I meant to say earlier, there's a lot of potential here. It's just for whatever reason, they, um, people that designed this site stuck in the past. Let's leave it at that. Okay. Here, not a big fan of the header. Like, again, this is an example of a site that like has potential. Like they have some amazing headshots. Um, they have recommended articles. Like clearly they have experience. They have some five stars. Wow. 4.9 stars, 142 reviews. Like, yeah, clearly they're a great law firm. But then like this, for example, they have a slideshow. Like the first thing people see, it's a slideshow. But the image is not only are they not relevant at all. Like this pictures could be like past. Um, I don't know. I guess there's not too many images for a law firm, but maybe it could be of their office could be of like maybe some image image symbolizing past cases. One, like if they want a case for like the Flint water crisis, like um, these guys, they have, they have a girl drinking water, right? Like that's a relevant image. Um, but they have just like completely random, like this one <laughs> or the earth or the sea. It's just like good looking, like cool stock images, but not relevant at all. And the one thing people have to keep in mind for your homepage, relevant 
is much better than like 4K, like really high HD images of the sea. Is way worse than like take an iPhone picture of your office, like or something like if your office doesn't look like complete <laughs> garbage, which it looks like these guys, like obviously they must have a big office. They have a bunch of lawyers. Um, so they could have just a beautiful image of their office as a header. And uh, but they don't even need a slideshow in the first place. It's not a big deal, um, but just it just shows sometimes, oftentimes website designers, they will just put things on your site just to have it there. Like, oh, uh, we're going to bill you for the slideshow functionality. And then the, the law firm, the client, they're like, OK, yeah, slideshows look nice. But they don't really ever fully explain, like, why do we actually need it? Uh, a slideshow like so yeah it's one thing you have to watch out for um i always think like every section on your website particularly on your home page that's everything should be perfect on your home page that's why i'm also just reviewing the home page because also if i was reviewing every page this would be like 10 hours um but yeah the home page is is so important and yeah every, everything should be perfect basically and should have a specific purpose purpose behind this slideshow with these cool stock photos not not much okay um that's that's enough about that one so this one um the the google google search landed me on this specific page um, but it's not their home page so this one I think it looks, it's outdated, clearly. Um, the font, the structure of the site. But still, I think um, it does inspire trust. They have a clear, um, so here's an example. They have this amazing picture of their team, but it has this weird blue, like they've done a blue overlay of it. Um, the colors are sort of off, the fonts, not great, and uh, spacing is off. They have these really old buttons, these, or not buttons, bad badges. Like these badges look like they're designed 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, it's, this is a case where there's a lot of potential again, but it's just outdated. Um, again, example right here. I think I'm gonna keep going back to this one because it's just such a such a great website. We do see some real photos, so it looks like this is the this is that guy. I'm guessing Rothenberg. Um, so that's good. They have all the key credentials. They have a bunch of lawyers, like billions one, over 50 years experience. It's just the presentation that doesn't inspire as much trust. Recent mass torts, Tylenol autism. That's huge because, well, everyone knows about Tylenol. Everyone knows about autism. So, I mean, it would definitely help their credibility if more people knew about this. But just the way they've presented it, Why not do it more like this, right? Cool slideshow is another example. Um, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of potential. It's just the presentation of, of how they've done it does not really inspire trust. So, okay, let's see. Romano Law. Um, the design is more modern. It's just a bit messy. There is is a lot going on on each screen. So featured on and a lot of recognition, um, a lot of buttons, like a, a lot of sections. It seems like there was some mistake found. The embed stopped working. It's, that's his no posts found. Um, 
blog. Clearly, it's recent as well, which is great. But yeah, there's a lot of buttons, a lot of things going on. And uh, yeah, it just sort of seems to be somewhat thrown together. They definitely could have used more spacing, more images. Um, I mean, they did use a good amount of images. I think perhaps more relevant images. So they just have images of like New York architecture, New York downtown architecture, which it's cool, but you could include something with employment law. Like they have this really thin parallax section here. It just seems like this is another case like... Uh, was it this one? No, this one. Very thin parallax section, yeah. Just seems like a, a case of just things sort of like thrown together. Um, definitely does not follow my rule of every single section or thing on your homepage should have a specific purpose and, you know, be perfect. But they do do some things right. Like book now, phone number right there. Hey, that's like half the battle. Because like I said, a lot of these people uh, landing on these sites, like they just want someone to help them right now because this is the biggest problem in their life right now. So yeah, they have that. Um, but yeah, I think they could definitely, definitely improve on the presentation and organization especially. Okay. Um, that's a hard name to say. Um, it looks, it looks nice. It's, it's modern. The design is good. It's clean. The spacing is right. The font is good. Um, they don't have any walls of text. Main issue I see is there just isn't too much personalization. So at least they have this. If they didn't have this, I would be like this, this sucks <laughs> because it's, you can't just rely on like a good design because any, Anyone uh, that's broke could make a good design. You have to show some proof of like, okay, can you execute on what I can do and or what I need done? And in this case, there isn't too much proof. At least you show you have like several lawyers and it looks like some sort of office, but the amount of proof on this homepage is, is very small. It's like 10% of other websites I really liked. Words from our clients just one testimonial is that like people are going to think is this the only one you have and also it's on yelp why is why do you say words if there's only one so there's one testimonial this is emphasized abraham lincoln's section or abraham abraham lincoln's quote with the stock photo is more is visually more important than all of the testimonials on your homepage, which I know is just one, but it's like, you have to ask yourself, are you prioritizing the right things on your website? This one is not. Okay. Go, whoa. I'm shocked. Okay, nah, this everything makes sense now copyright 2013 it looks like this was made in 2013 yeah i rarely ever ever see a website like this especially the first page of google maps results for such for new york lawyers wow but hey like i said just need to emphasize again just because you have a bad website doesn't mean you have a bad business clearly he has a good business if he's been around you know this long and I think he probably has so much business, he doesn't care about losing clients from his website, which let's be honest, I'm sure he does. Like if people are looking up Toronto lawyers and they land on this one, then they land on this one, <laughs> who are they going to go for? And who are they going to, I think people are going to be more comfortable paying double to these people, you know, like paying them six or 800 an hour versus paying this one 400 an hour. So they're, they're more comfortable paying double just from like, you know, the first impression they get that because people are going to pay more if they're 100% sure you can solve their problem and do it well, right? Like, why would you save money 
and then have your problem not be solved. No one would do that. Like even, <laughs> even the dumbest people know, okay, everyone wants value, yes, but they want value uh, after their problem is solved. So if there's two people that can solve their problem, yeah, then they'll go for value. But especially if it's a hard problem, that's why it's like, if a problem is very simple, you don't need to generate much trust. Um, if you need to buy flowers, you don't need to compare like 10 flower websites. Honestly, you sort of just compare on price. It's like, okay, do they have a bouquet of roses? I mean, you can also compete on like the brand aspect. Like, is it a known brand? But usually what these, what companies like that, if they're selling flowers, what they compete on is service. Like, does it get there quick? Um, low shipping costs, uh, good reviews, as in like the flowers don't come like broken. Like, and are they reliable? Cause like, if you need it for Valentine's day and then it's a day late, like you're, you're screwed. So, um, those are the things that people look at, but in something like a uh, law firm, there can be some very hairy problems that people need dealt with. And so they will pay top dollar to make sure that person does, uh, does solve it and solves it well. So this is like, why, why are you, why do you have a video in the menu? Why is the menu red? I don't want to get too much into the design because like, I think this was probably a pretty good website in 2013. Like I wouldn't be surprised if you paid like 10, 20,000 for this back then. But um, if you paid like even a thousand dollars for this now, I'd be like, wow, you got, <laughs> you got scammed. But yeah, hey, I mean, clearly he's on TV. He probably gets um, like this looks like a TV ad. He probably gets all the leads he needs. So doesn't really need a website. Although I will say he has his website in the TV ad. People are going to go to his website. Even if he has all the clients he can deal with, they may not really trust or respect him too much. Too much. Like maybe he has to differentiate himself with price. Like, hey, I'm only 300 an hour. But if he like really upgraded this website, had it look like this, then people, you know, maybe he'd be able to charge 600 an hour. So um, it's not just about the number of clients. It's also about the quality of clients, like how much they respect you, because that also leads to how much you're going to make. And a business needs healthy margins in order to uh, be healthy. Yeah, this. Yeah, next next website. Okay, this one um, also looks very old, to be honest. Not 2013 old like the last one, but like 2017, 2016. Just a wall of text. There's not really much here that will inspire trust. At least you see 2011 and you see an image of her. That's about it. You see two badges, but not really important ones. Yeah. And then a slideshow of stock images. Like why I'm asking myself, why is, why is branding the first image? Here's a rule of thumb. I just thought of don't ask, don't like make people ask themselves questions on your homepage that can't be answered like at least very quickly right here branding people are going to be like okay branding what so a lot of a lot of the times if there's something like this then you'll maybe have some explanation like okay i do law for branding uh for businesses that fo that focus on branding but there's nothing about that here or people may click next on the slideshow to see like okay um like answer my question, like, what do you mean branding? But no, there's nothing. And there's just a random stock image and then like another one of a fashion industry. So, okay, at least here, fashion law. Okay, and I guess business contracts, business incorporation, but like this was not the image to use for that. Yeah, this one. It was just sort of thrown together. Okay, next. Okay, finally. This one is is uh, pretty awesome. Let's be honest. 
big smiling photos, professional lawyers, amazing, beautiful font. A nice touch here, they have an image gradient. So, so they have this overlay. One, the overlay makes it look more professional. So it sort of adds like a, a layer to the image. But two, it makes the text more visible. Rarely do you want to have white text on like a light background because that's that's hard to read. It's it's low legibility. But this amazing. This is a website where you're like, okay, you land on this. They handled all the details. But I did I did see this website before. There's there's an issue. Let's see, can you think of what the issue is with the site? Okay, I'll tell you. Wall of text. They started off so well. Amazing. Even have the badges here. And then it's just a bunch of walls of text. It's a bit disappointing. Uh, and then just like a generic, um, like, you know, WordPress plugin. Uh, not plugin, but um, WordPress section that you see on a lot of sites. I mean, it looks good, but... If you're if you have such an amazing header section, I have and clearly you're you're a big business, like you're you were in Forbes, you were in New York Post, Wall Street Journal. Um, what is that? Daily Mail. Um I, I would hold you to a higher standard. And yeah, it's just a bunch of walls of text. Yeah, so I would <laughs> going back to my favorite. Look at this one. You probably got more images of your office, of your team, of, you know, whoever the managing partner is. Leverage that. Make it more visually engaging. Some case studies. Um, okay, 2 billion in closed transactions. That's huge. So what are some examples? Some big case studies. There aren't, there aren't any. Okay. Oh. Oh. It's like, I don't even want, I want to end this video now. I can't, I can't, I can't keep doing this. You know, at this point, I think I've taught you enough. It's been like, it's been an hour, almost an hour. Wow. So I don't even have to explain. I just, uh, here, compare this one, similar to this one, I'd say, and this one. Compare those to my favorite, <laughs> this one. Okay, that's that's that. I Okay, I'll say one last thing. I can't help myself. Oh, what's interesting, they have this start chat, which was the same as here. <laughs> hey, they did one thing, right? <laughs> but honestly, this is like one of the things, probably the only thing I didn't really agree with on this site. I don't know if I'd include that because you have it here. You don't need to spam people with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's just, they have the same thing. Um, so what I'll say here is... They have 1 billion one. They have, this is an insane guarantee. This is insane. I know, I know a good amount of lawyers do this, but not everyone because this like, you put your balls on the line here. If you don't win your case, you don't pay. Like that's, personally, I wish more, more lawyers would do that. I know uh, I've been, uh, lost a lot of money in, in uh, cases where this was not the case. To lawyers or paralegals so <laughs> it's just a presentation legal victories 15 million like <sighs> wow so i almost want to like reach out to them be and be like you have everything to have one of the best websites for a New York lawyer. You have everything that's needed. 
You just need the design and the contact form. Come on. It it honestly, it annoys me because it's like you have so much potential and you just threw it all away with the 10-year-old website. <laughs> okay, here website is not even, does not even work. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's, someone didn't uh, renew their SSL certificate maybe, but it's not a good website. Maybe they're, they're out of business or something. I know I said in some cases like, hey, maybe you have too much business to deal with, but in cases like this, you can't let it get this bad. Like then you'll just basically lose everyone. Like you'll get no new clients. And here's an issue with if, you, if you're not trying to grow, like if you're like, okay, I'm happy with where I'm at. I don't need to invest in this. Yeah, for now, but your pipeline will dry up. If you have a website like this or where was that one? Or like this one, because you have too many clients, too much to deal with. Eventually, things will dry up. Your pipeline will dry up and you're not getting new ones from this website. Maybe. At least not compared to competitors. So while your competitors are like really impressing people, getting a ton of leads, your pipeline's slowly drying up. And then eventually you look around and you're like, wait, where are all my leads? And you could have evaded that if you just invested a bit into online marketing, into staying updated. So yeah, I definitely don't agree with the idea of like stagnation because if you're not growing, you're dying. And you know, no, no business owner starts a business to have it be dying. Okay, here are win law. Yeah, they went way too heavy on the images. Um, they have this masonry design. I mean, it is sort of cool the way they did it, but yeah, it just doesn't doesn't necessarily inspire trust. Millions recovered for our clients. So because of my experience looking all, at all these other examples, here's a lesson. If your win isn't that impressive, don't don't talk about it. You want to talk about your strengths. There are other businesses here, that, law firms, half a billion, two billion, three billion, billions. They're saying here millions recovered. We just looked at some law firms where one case alone was like 15 million or 16 million. It looks like one case was more than everything they did. So in cases like that, yeah, don't, um, don't feature a strength if it's not really a strength, at least compared to competitors. Um, and then the, the text that loads slowly like this, not a great idea. It's sort of outdated. I mean, in general, this website does look, you know, five, eight years old. Um, yeah, things, things have changed. Whoa. So what they did here, this is for SEO. Wow. Um, thing is, things like this don't really work with Google anymore. Like having, like this stuff worked when this website was made and it looks like it was made close to 10 years ago. Yeah, this was, this was good back then. This worked. Not anymore. And now, wow, they, it looks like they have hundreds of pages because for e-scooter accident, they have like eight pages for that. Wow. They probably invested a lot of money into this a long time ago. I think this should be a lesson to businesses. Instead of investing a ton of money once every 10 years, it's good to invest a pretty low amount every two years because everything changes, especially these days in a very fast moving world. Um, the search engine rules change. Design changes like what people pr prefer to see on a website. How they use it changes. For example, people moving from desktop to mobile. Um, and technology changes too. So some things get way easier to do. 
So for example, background video, when this site was made, a background video wasn't really a good idea. Now it's, now it's a great one. Like, look at this one. So yeah, a lot of reasons to periodically update your site instead of like making some massive behemoth every 10, <laughs> 10 years. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. This video is too long, but <laughs> let me power through. So this one, yeah, pretty good. A real, it looks like a real photo. Looks like they're focusing on their ideal clientele. So it looks like people, probably lower income people, like cash advance on your case available. Okay, so like he's speaking to his target audience. That's good. Um, he has some examples, again, where people can go through like table of content style, go through and read what they're actually looking for. That's awesome. He has a video. That's nice. It'll, it'll load one day. Um, verdicts. See, I know what I said earlier, uh, if it's only millions recovered, well, you also have to keep in mind who the target audience is. Clearly, this is more lower income people that I think this is very compelling to these people. Cash advance on your case available. Like that's probably very appealing. And it works for him too. Like if let's say maybe it's a $200,000 case and he can give a cash advance of like 20,000. It's like these people are probably like, oh my, oh my God. Like it's, it's such a compelling offer. Um, and then he probably keeps like 150,000. Then they get that 20,000 advance. Then they get the 30,000 after. He's winning. They're sort of winning. I mean, yeah, it's the cash advance thing is just so compelling to them, I'm sure. And so here, these numbers actually do work now because you're not talking about getting these numbers for a massive corporation like some of these were, I think, uh, or for a city or like a case. Um, I forget the term where you have like a hundred, a hundred people suing together. It starts with a C, but yeah, you don't have a case like that. This is like an individual $300,000 he got by, for being struck by a car. So yeah, I think this is awesome. I think the design could be better. Um, doesn't have to be just like, you know, a section of text. Um, let's go back to this. You know, an image. I know this looks sort of complicated. It doesn't have to be. You don't need to use this complicated pattern design. You have a section split into two columns. You have the image on the left. Uh, the image is something relevant. You have an overlay over it so that you can see the text over. The text is, and you can apply this in your case too. It doesn't have to be like law firm with like how much money you have, like, or how much money you want. Could be like just the most relevant text, like the most eye grabbing text over the image, the relevant image. And then you have the title explaining it, maybe a bit clickbaity so people read it. And then you explain it in a paragraph. Simple could do the same thing here. You have like, like an image of a fall. Uh, you have the number, obviously, you put the number one. And then this could be the title. And then you explain it. Boom, 10 times better. See, this doesn't have to be hard. What's what's shocking to me is, it's not like these law firms make the site. It's not like this guy made the site. Because if he made the site, I'd be like, wow, you have a you have a gift. Like if you made this site, <laughs> you're an amazing lawyer and you, you're a great website designer. But no, it's it's law firms that are probably charging these businesses like $50,000 for a site like this. And I'm like, why? I think they just know they can get away with it. <laughs> they can get away with a mediocre website. 
and charging them insane amounts just because, I don't know, 20 years experience. Look at all these law firm sites we made, which by the way, suck. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, let me get through the rest. Um, yeah, the font, not a big fan. Uh, no personalization doesn't doesn't inspire trust at all i don't see any any reason to i don't see one thing on their site that inspires trust on their home page like this site could have made could have been made yesterday by by me at least from the home page like there's no real images. There's no proof of past work. Um, there's no there's no like proof of like anything, um, and the design is sort of outdated. Design isn't terrible, but I don't know. Like where's where's an email? Where's they have a phone number? I, yeah, that's good, but. Yeah, I don't know why they also don't really have a footer either. Okay, last one. Um, I guess it's, clearly they have, um, these are images of cryptocurrency like Tether, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Binance coin, and some stable coin. Um, so... Yeah, it seems like that's their niche. I think that's awesome. I think this, the design could be better. Like if you're technology-based, I would expect more from your design. But at the same time, not only could the design be like more, more techie, more like congruent to their brand, they're not really emphasizing it. Like if you want to be known for these things, emphasize it. If you don't, if you want to like play both sides, bad idea. Like you, you can't have one foot in, one foot out. I mean, you can, but your your website isn't going to convert as much. You're not going to really inspire trust as much. So if you do cater to these things, if you want more of these cases, which I think a lot of law firms do, I think it can, it can be very lucrative, especially because it's like it's a new industry. And like if you have experience in it, you differentiate yourself. But, like, mention it more. Okay, I guess they mention it in services, but not not too much. Eh, latest articles. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this site's bad by any means. Um, I just think the design, I think too much white. Should we go back to this one? <laughs> I think by this point, you've probably gotten sick of this site. Honestly, I have a bit too. Okay, finally, something I saw wrong. This. Not sure why the footers extended th this much, but two-thirds of it is not needed. Could be some, some, uh, yeah, some design issue. I don't know. Uh... Oh, this site doesn't really even have a clear footer. I mean, sort of does. But it's mixed in with the contact form. That's a bit strange. But yeah, it's it's just, I think, personally, a bit too plain. I know some sites had too much going on. This one, not really enough. And they alternate, I think, too much between like, okay, you have a massive amount of buttons, but then you have like, just a bit of text about your services. You really have to think about weighted. You, before making your website, you should weight your section. So you have your, obviously your pages, but then you have the sections on each page. Let's talk about your homepage. On the homepage, you have the header, in this case, featured in, services, our team, latest articles, contact form. So the, those are the sections on your homepage. But then you want to weight them in terms of how important they are. 
obviously, like the header is, I would say the most important section. But then featured in versus services, would you say they're equally important? Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like services, you could say is twice as important. So then like services should be like twice as engaging, twice as big. Some, it's hard to exactly quantify like, okay, should it be twice as many words? Like, no, that's not twice as many images, but like twice as, I don't know, visually engaging, interactive um, information. In this one, I would probably just put a row of the most important images. And then you have an option, show more. You don't need to show three rows. So like have a row. And then, yeah, in services, include a bit more. Mm. Maybe not, um, not like sentences of each, because like I said earlier, um, people don't want to read a wall of wall of text like in this case about each service. Uh, where is it here? I'm not saying do it like that, but like maybe images, but images may not really work if you have seven because then the section will, will take up a lot of space if you have an image alongside each. So honestly, in this case, I would sort of consider splitting it up more. So it looks like like one way of doing it is you have three types of clientele. You have the crypto crowd, you have the, uh, I don't know, investors, and then real estate. So then you have a section with an image for each, like you have three columns, an image of that person, and then, and then some sentences explaining. And then each person will fall under these, one of these three areas. So then people click like, okay, so it's like crypto. So then you, they go to the crypto page and then you have this crypto services. So you have blockchain and crypto, you have blockchain litigation, asset protection. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. But um, if you have like a bunch of services, it's good to split them up further instead of just listing them all out. In some cases, there isn't a good way to list them out. Like uh, <laughs> here, my favorite. Um, you, you can't really list these into you can't group these into categories. They're all unique. So in this case, you can't, but it still looks good because you have the image alongside it. Font is good. Like people will find what they're looking for. But here, um, there are similarities between the services and um, it's just not set up in such a visually engaging way like like this. If they If they did this, if this site did a similar design to that, I would say, okay, you, you can do that. But I would either do, do it like how they did it or split it up into these sections for different demographics or different interests. Okay. Wow. This is a very long video. Um, I hope you learned a lot. Uh, if you want me to record more videos like this, um, different industries, different cities, um, just like this video and comment. Uh, definitely, it would show me that people are interested in this. And um, yeah, I look forward to showing you more behind the scenes topics, um, behind the scenes videos on exactly uh, like the thought process of a web designer on small business websites. All right, see you soon.